Be seated. I declare the June 2007 convocation assembled for the granting of degrees. Mr. President, members of the Board of Governors and Senate faculty, honored guests, graduates, and friends, my name is Brant Louie and I am the Chancellor of this university. This is our 42nd annual convocation, and we are delighted and honored to have in attendance today a number of distinguished guests on the platform and in the audience. I am pleased also to welcome our audience from around the world joining us via the internet. Welcome to you all. This morning's Honorary Doctorate of Science will be conferred on Dr. Terence Snutch. Honored guests, graduates, and families, friends, faculty, and staff. It is my great honor and privilege to welcome you to Simon Fraser University's Spring 2007 Convocation Ceremony. The Convocation Ceremony is a proud tradition that dates back to the 12th century. It is a rite of passage that is based on a long established ancient custom. It connects us to our past and to the generations that will follow. The first North American commencement ceremony was held at Harvard University in the year 1642, and this proud and rich tradition has endured for over three and a half centuries. Today celebrates your rite of passage, and in doing so connects you to those first graduates 365 years ago. Today is an important milestone in your life. Surrounded by the family and friends who have supported you, you are thinking about your future, what you will do, who you will become, and how you will be contributing. As you are all aware, the world into which we are stepping has changed quite a bit since the 17th century when that first convocation ceremony was held. But as you contemplate the seemingly unlimited possibilities and opportunities that lie ahead, you are probably as excited and as nervous as those first graduates so long ago. In less than three years, we usher in the year 2010. I remember when I graduated in 1966, the year 2010 was so far away that even imagining it was considered science fiction. Technology and science have exploded into previously unimagined new frontiers, and you are on the threshold of a future that is almost impossible to imagine. Trend spotters, economists, and experts predict that the next five years will see even more revolutionary and lifestyle changing innovations. But frankly, the notion that technology is pushing the limits of our society is not new. 
every new age of civilization adopted technologies that impacted the social structure and lifestyles of the times in significant and long-lasting ways. Even though our history shows how our societies adapt themselves around new technology, I believe it is knowledge, not technology, that has always been the true power at the heart of our progress. The value of an education should not be measured only in dollar and cents. Knowledge is the true currency of this brave new world you will enter, these uncharted waters you will navigate. It is information and the ability to create knowledge that will be the key to the future. Alvin Toffler once said, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. A commitment to learning, unlearning, and relearning can be found at the core of Simon Fraser University and has helped us earn our place at the forefront of innovation and discovery. As graduates of Simon Fraser University, I truly believe you are well prepared to be leaders and pioneers. You are part of an academic institution that has demonstrated its commitment to staying on the cusp of innovation and science, an institution that has and will continue to prepare our students to be leaders for the next generation. You are the generation that will invent the technology that defines our future, technology that will be able to accommodate our endless creativity and innovation and your children will be born into a world where truly anything is possible. You will help us build on our reputation for innovation, pioneering, and excellence. Today, it seems that the only constant is change, which means that one of the things we can safely predict about the future is that it will be different. It is important that we all give some thought to the footprint we leave for generations to follow. We demonstrate our integrity when we offer deliberate self-awareness, openness to others, and consideration of the environment, communities, organization, cultures, and individuals which we interact with. As Gandhi said, happiness is when what you think, what you can say, and what you do are in harmony. With alignment, we achieve congruence between ourselves, others, and our context. Henry Ford, once said, quality means doing it right when nobody else is looking. Quality has always been an, an important part of Simon Fraser University's education and experience. And it will continue to be part of you as you seek out new opportunities, encounter new challenges, and continue in the pioneering spirit of this proud institution. In closing, I would like to leave you with the words of Albert Einstein who said, Learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. The important thing is not to stop questioning. We look forward to adding your achievements and successes to our already robust reputation. You are now the future, so make the most of it. Congratulations and thank you. I now call upon the president of this university, Dr. Michael Stevenson. Mr. Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to add my warm welcome to that of the chancellor. I regret only that a uh, lottery ticket for excellent weather expired last week, and I hope that uh, the SFU standard issue of blankets will keep you warm, as will the spirit of this uh, great occasion. Uh, this is a day, of course, when we celebrate the achievements of the graduating class from the Faculty of Science and from our newest faculty, the Faculty of Health Sciences, the first graduates from uh, that faculty. And their individual achievements are very much worth uh, celebrating. They have met the very demanding standards set by SFU for their degrees, and most of them will have overcome challenges along the way which people of lesser intellect or intelligence uh, might uh, not have survived. But you, ladies and gentlemen of the graduating class, have indeed uh, not only survived, but thrived and succeeded, uh, and we all gather together in celebrating your achievement. We celebrate also, of course, the strength 
that you have received from family and friends here, uh, from faculty and staff in your faculties and programs. At the end of the day, your individual achievements are buttressed by the strength and identity of this university. And understanding that strength and identity is something I think that is important uh, for all of us, and in my view is best expressed by the new visual identity and logo that we have adopted, SFU, Thinking of the World. Thinking of the World first, of course, uh, refers at any great university to a commitment to scholarship and to excellence in scholarship. And across all our programs, but particularly in the health sciences and in science, uh, that excellence uh, is clear. Indications, for example, of the individual achievements of faculty uh, mark this excellence. Faculty members have been admitted to the Order of Canada from biological science to the Order of British Columbia from gerontology to the Royal Society of Canada uh, in chemistry, to Killam Fellowships in biology and physics. A faculty member in chemistry won the Stacey Prize, awarded the best young scientist in Canada. The Dean of Science was admitted to the American Physical Society, joining the world's elite physicists. And his legacy is carried on by a younger colleague now leading Canada's team analyzing the results of the most important fundamental experiments in physics headed at the CERN Accelerator in Switzerland. SFU faculty in your faculties have directed national centers of excellence in industrial mathematics and a National Health Research Institute for Research on Diabetes. The list could go on. You are aware of the great strengths of faculty you have encountered, and I hope that you take with you memories of in engagement with the great scholars uh, who have made your success possible. SFU's commitment to thinking of the world, of course, extends uh, beyond the scholarly boundaries of faculties and beyond the boundaries of our country and our province. Uh, it refers to an interest, of course, in international education. And SFU has made great strides while you were here uh, with imaginative and important new programs, especially in China with the top-ranking universities of that uh, enormously growing country, and in India, where for obvious uh, reasons, similarly, we are deeply engaged. And SFU's leadership in international education is buttressed also by innovation in academic programming, including the establishment of a new school for international studies. But thinking of the world extends not simply beyond our boundaries, but to our immediate environment and local community. In many ways, uh, the strength of SFU have been built on deep engagement in our local uh, community. This commitment was expressed, for example, 21 years ago when we established the downtown campus uh, of SFU in the heart of Vancouver. That campus has grown while you have been here with the establishment of the new Siegel Graduate School of Business and as we speak, the foundations for our new School for Contemporary Arts are being poured in the massive redevelopment of the historic Woodward's department store site in the downtown east side. And you have seen another bold initiative like that which established the downtown Vancouver site with the establishment of our new campus in Surrey. These commitments, of course, are expressed in terms of a commitment to the transformation of the social environment in which we live, especially in the redevelopment of the most needy and depressed areas of the community. So ladies and gentlemen of the graduating class, I hope that you identify with SFU's commitments to thinking of the world. I hope you will always continue to think deeply about the world, the society in which we live, and the natural order we depend upon, to think deeply about our place in a world of cultural diversity and political conflict, and the need to build partnerships that create sustainable peace and development, and to think deeply about ways in which to engage in our local community where we can be most effective and where we are most accountable. 
On behalf of all of us at SFU, I applaud your achievements as students here. I wish you well as you go on balancing your private and personal ambition with a continued commitment to thinking of the world. Our very best wishes for your future success and happiness. Congratulations to you all. The honorary degree will now be conferred. Mr. President, will you present the honorary degree candidate, Dr. Snudge? Mr. Chancellor, it is my privilege to present Dr. Terence Snutch, one of this university's most gifted and accomplished alumni. Dr. Snutch's groundbreaking research in molecular neurobiology has placed him in the front ranks of those scientists whose insights into nature's mysteries most benefit society. He earned his BSc and PhD on this campus and later joined the California Institute of Technology as a senior research fellow. While there, he laid the foundation for an astonishing career in research. Among his many early discoveries, he developed a novel methodology to clone and express brain proteins, work which led to the isolation of the first serot serotonin receptor. Subsequently, and to this province's great good fortune, he returned home and joined the University of British Columbia where as Professor and Canada Research Chair in the Michael Smith Laboratories, he has used his formidable talents to uncover relation the relationship between calcium levels and pain, the role of specific calcium channels in transmitting pain signals to the body, and the potential for blockers to intercept those signals and alleviate pain symptoms. His revolutionary discoveries are the bedrock on which calcium channel research is now conducted. They have contributed inestimably towards understanding fundamental mechanisms in neurobiology, cardiovascular physiology, and cell biology. In fact, Dr. Snutch's seminal work has also provided the basis for new insights into a number of serious human genetic conditions and created unlimited new opportunities in pharma pharmacotherapy. Dr. Snutch understood immediately the clinical possibilities of his seminal research in the global race to develop a safe and effective painkiller, and he founded Neuromed Pharmaceuticals. As its vice president and chief scientific officer, he led the company from the discovery of its pain-blocking drug through successful clinical trials. In early 2006, Neuromed licensed one of the top uh, drugs to Merck and Company in the largest pharmaceutical licensing deal in Canadian history. Dr. Snutch has received many honors for these contributions to science and to business. They include the International Albrecht Fleckenstein Award, the Killam Research Prize, the New Frontiers in Research Award from the BC Innovation Council. He is a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada, and in 2004, BC Biotech named him the Researcher of the Year. Today, we are honored to recognize this exemplary scientist, entrepreneur, and alumnus of Simon Fraser University. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of this university, I ask that you now confer upon Dr. Terence Snutch the degree Doctor of Science honoris causa. Terence Snutch, by virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa. Dr. Snutch will be hooded by Dr. Bill Crane, Associate Vice President, Academics.
It is now my pleasure to call on Dr. Snutch for his convocation address. Yeah. Change glasses here. It's nice to be home. Uh, it's actually, uh, I'd forgotten how beautiful the rhododendrons are, and uh, nothing has changed much other than the faces and a few more gray hairs on some of my, my ex-professors uh, out there but they're all still here and working hard. So let, let me start off by thanking Simon Fraser University for this wonderful honor, especially to President Stevenson and the SFU Board of Directors for their acknowledgement of my work over the past two decades. It is indeed humbling to find myself up here, especially after some of the grades that I obtained in undergraduate physics and, uh, and uh, calculus. Uh, in fact, I think the only saving grace that I'm here is that there was no test. So this ceremony isn't about me. It's about you, the graduates, your families. You've all worked extremely hard, made numerous sacrifices, and you should all be heartily congratulated on a job well done. I can also say that you all made superb choices a number of years ago. First, we're at a time in our history when science and technology are the predominant underlying factors in our society and how it will be shaped, in which directions it will go in the next 50 to 100 years. You all made the decision several years ago to go into science and healthcare technology for your training, and as such, you have the, will have the distinct career, and intellectual advantage, distinct career and intellectual advantages over many of your colleagues in, in, out there in the, in the rest of the world. Second, you made the conscious choice to come to Simon Fraser University for your tra training. And I think I speak from much uh, personal experience, having obtained a number of degrees here already, uh, when I say that SFU provides an outstanding foundation for what you will need out there in the real world, for being innovative for tackling challenges thrown up at you, for making the right choices moving forward. It has served me very well over the years. If I put myself into the position that you are all in at this moment, I go back nearly 23 years to August of 1984. Within days of defending my PhD, I got on an airplane to the great unknown. And for me, that unknown was I was about to take up a postdoctoral research position at Caltech, University, California Institute of Technology. Coming from SFU, Caltech was a very intimidating place. Academically, Caltech ranks right up there with the top two or three universities in, in the US, Stanford, MIT, Harvard. As a group, they only consider the top two or three percent of the students as undergraduates and graduate students around the world. Over the years at Caltech, there have been 32 Nobel Prizes awarded to faculty and graduates. And on any given day, you can walk, walk toward to the lunch for the cafeteria and come across two or three Nobel laureates in chemistry or physics or medicine. So it's a very intimidating place. And, and from that, fresh from that PhD defense in 1984, I got off a plane in Los Angeles, made my way to Pasadena and Caltech, and things didn't go well from the beginning. It was around 35 degrees Celsius, about 105 Fahrenheit, and I was wearing long pants and a sweater. The head of the lab that I was entering at Caltech, Norman Davidson, was a very famous fellow, himself having been nominated multiple times for Nobel Prizes, and in fact having one of his postdoctoral fellows actually win a Nobel Prize. I soon found myself in a very different environment than the one at the Department of Biology at SFU. The labs were comparatively large. One lab had over 100 people doing science in the biology department. The lab I was entering had 19 other postdoctoral fellows. So not only was it a cultural shock in terms of size, but in terms of the background of my new colleagues. They were all from these other institutions, MIT, Stanford, Harvard, Yale. Not a single SFU grad in sight, only one other Canadian in sight, and he was from the University of Toronto. So I walked into that first lab meeting with considerable apprehension, looking around at these other 19 colleagues that I, I've had from Stanford, Harvard, and the like, and I felt a bit like a member of a junior B hockey team having to face the NHL. It was intimidating, it was a bit scary, and I didn't want to open my mouth lest it be uh, let out that this new kid from Canada, from this place, unknown place called Simon Fraser, didn't know a thing about science. Well, it turned out differently. I was very pleasantly surprised to find that my scientific training at Simon Fraser had been equal to or above the lead, the, that of my many, my many new colleagues. At Simon Fraser, I had been taught to think concisely, to think critically, to communicate cl clearly, to perform research experiments at a world-class level. In short, I was prepared. I was ready. For the first time, I understood the, the motto, nous sommes prêts. That underlying sense of Canadian insecurity rapidly went away, and I excelled at, at, at research in my new environment. And which leads me to a small piece of advice. I'm sure that we're all in the same boat. Like myself, getting on that plane to Los Angeles 23 years ago, you may be all feeling, what's next? What can I do to make a contribution? What will provide for myself and my family? What will make the world a better place? 
Well, my advice is to get on that plane, go take a job somewhere else, somewhere in the world for a while, meet new and different people, experience different cultures, find out what you appreciate about those cultures, find out what you find lacking in those cultures. The net result will be that when you come back to Canada, you will not only be better off for your experience, but we will be also. From that experience, you will also find that there are many reasons why Canada is continually ranked as one of the best countries in the world to live. Of course, we have many significant and pressing issues that we need to continue to work on concerning education, health care, housing for the disadvantaged, the environment, and so on. It's not perfect here, but you'll realize that we have a great base from which to build. And by coming to Simon Fraser to help form that base within yourselves, you have trained in science and healthcare technology. You've already got a great head start. You're all in an excellent position to help sol solve some of those critical issues facing society. For me personally, most of my professional successes have come from taking on challenges that in hindsight I had no business taking on, any of which could have failed at any time. In the one instance in my research I discovered and characterized a class of genes that uh, President Stevenson mentioned that are crucial to how many aspects of the body function, how you hear, how you see, how you feel pain, how your muscles contract. It turns out that these genes are all relevant to many types of human disease, high blood pressure and other types of cardiac disease chronic pain, certain types of blindness, autism, certain types of cancer. When I started the project, I didn't know what I would find. That's the beauty of science. You never know what you'll find out. You'll never know what the, where the journey will take you. In my case, when it became clear that I was onto something that could prove to be an enormous t undertaking, many of my well-meaning colleagues told me not to take on the entire project, that it was too big for someone just starting out, that my competitors would come in and walk all over me. I didn't listen. Later on again, when I had the notion that I could start it from scratch a drug company to develop drugs for these various diseases, I was told that it wasn't doable, that I should just pass off the ideas to a big pharmaceutical company and to consult for them. Again, I didn't listen. I could go on with other examples, but it's apparent I just don't hear the words, you can't do that, or that's not possible. My advice to you is don't be afraid to think differently. Don't be afraid to work hard. Don't be afraid to say I don't know and that you don't have all the answers. And most of all, don't be afraid to fail. The last thing I will suggest, or rather request of you, that as you go through life, as you climb that ladder of success, wherever it may take you, is to be kind and considerate of others around you, to take the time and effort to help out those who are not, not as well off or as fortunate as you. I'm talking about being compassionate, treating everyone equally as human beings, your work colleagues, the gas station attendant, the waitress, the custodian, everyone. Don't wait until you're at the top of the ladder to be compassionate. Don't wait until you're comfortable and successful in life uh, to give something back. Don't wait for that call, that inevitable call from the Simon Fraser Alumni Association to give something back. It's not only the right thing to do, it's also a lot more fun and enjoyable to bring others along for the ride, to pull up others on the ladder with you. So in summary, I've been very fortunate to have passed through Simon Fraser along the way. I know from first-hand experience that you've acquired the right stuff. Nous sommes prêts, vous sommes prêts. You are ready. Thank you again for this tremendous honour. Thank you, Dr. Snudge. Ladies and gentlemen, as part of the ceremony, the Alumni Association will present a Simon Fraser University alumni pin to the graduates as they leave the stage. The pin will be presented by a member of the Alumni Association, and at this ceremony, that person is Dr. Anne Rose, who completed a PhD in genetics from SFU in 1980 and was honored as one of SFU's outstanding alumni in 1996. She is currently a professor of genetics at the University of British Columbia, and I invite her to the podium to bring greetings to the graduates. Dr. Rose. Mr. Chancellor and President Stevenson, on behalf of the Alumni Association, it is my privilege and my pleasure to congratulate you all on your graduation. Today, as you begin your lives as members of the alumni community, you will join over 95,000 SFU graduates worldwide. As you cross the stage, I will be presenting you with an alumni pin. I encourage you to wear it proudly as a symbol of your achievement and your alumni status. Wherever life takes you in the future, be it Caltech or somewhere else, we hope that you will keep the Simon Fraser spirit alive 
and that you will stay connected to SFU and to your fellow alumni. Thank you, Dr. Rose. The members of the graduating class will now be presented to the Chancellor for admission en masse to their degrees. Would the graduates please rise? <clears throat> Mr. Chancellor, I present to you these scholars who have fulfilled the statutory requirements laid down by the Senate of the University and I request that you confer upon each one the degree for which he or she is now recommended. By virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to your various and several degrees. Will the graduates please be seated? Before the graduates are presented individually to the Chancellor, I'm pleased to call upon Mr. Derek Chu, a member of the graduating class and the recipient of the Governor General Silver Medal to address convocation. Mr. Chu. Well, good morning to our families, our friends, faculty and guests and of course to my fellow graduates. Congratulations, we made it. It's an honor for me to be here at this exciting time in our lives as we reflect on our experiences at this university. As I began to contemplate my last four years, I started to think about how I've developed during my time at SFU, whether it be my growing addiction to coffee, an obsessive compulsive desire to check email every hour, or even the great appreciation for that rare free parking spot in Beelot. During these musings, I walked back to my car through the AQ, past the archaeology wing, into the applied science wing, and past the science corridors, which ironically mirrored my ever-changing choice in programs. And that's when it hit me. The one thing that SFU has given us, whether we realize it or not, the attitude for exploration. It's part of the historical design of the school. We can't avoid passing by the psychology labs on our way from uh, Images Theatre to the cafeteria. The Applied Science Building greets us every day as we trek mud and dirt into its hallways from Beelot. And of course, we cannot miss the beauty of our natural surroundings. The cedars, the snow-capped mountains, and even the Fraser River in the distance. It didn't dawn on me to these past few weeks that this interdisciplinary environment, this array of subject headings that greets us daily, is a visual reminder to encourage us to wander. The interconnected hallways of our uniquely designed university invites us constantly to explore our own career paths. Let us flash back 200 years. Our namesake, Simon Fraser, paddled down one of the greatest rivers in Canada. He challenged whirlpools, treacherous currents, and rapids. He explored. We, too, have surveyed our own possibilities while at this university. We have ridden our currents and rapids, and while doing so, the goals we've had as freshmen have changed and evolved. We are totally different people as we sit here today, older and wiser. It took determination and perseverance for Simon Fraser to accomplish his goals. Likewise, I'm sure we'd all agree it took determination to survive the climb up the hill this winter, on these sardine-packed translink buses, not to mention the proverbial fog, October through April, and that's put wandering in a whole new light. As Simon Fraser entered the new world, he needed to overcome challenges which he met largely alone. We have been more fortunate, for each of us here is part of a larger community. This institution may be made of concrete, yet it is paradoxically personal. For example, several months ago, on a trip to Chicago, I started to search for a password I needed for an early morning flight, realizing I had left it on campus. The guys at security responded to my phone call at 2 a.m. Every minute was precious, and when I eventually led them to the lab where I left my passport, they boldly entered and set off the alarm. For that brief minute, I was the rebel student, and they were the accomplices who bent the rules to help out a student in need. It was SFU Brotherhood at its best. 
We are all individuals. But as we convene for the last time under this roof, let us remember the sense of unity. So tomorrow, when we set out on our own journey, let's each build new communities as we continue to explore. Congratulations, Class of 2007. Thank you, Mr. Chu. Mr. Chu's medal will be presented later in this ceremony. Mr. Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, the members of the graduating class will now be presented to the Chancellor. A Dean's Convocation Medal is awarded to two top students in the faculty who have achieved the highest level of academic excellence at the graduate and undergraduate level. And just a few requests before we get underway. First, would you refrain from applauding individual members of the graduating class until all members of the, all, each group of degrees has been conferred. This does not forbid spontaneous expressions of enthusiasm. Second, would the graduates please return to your seats following receipt of your degrees? And as a courtesy to others, would people please remain seated until the conclusion of the ceremony? The degrees in the Faculty of Science and the Faculty of Health Sciences will now be conferred. Mr. Chancellor, the Dean of Graduate Studies, Dr. John Driver, will announce the names of candidates for graduate degrees. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chancellor, the recipient of the Dean of Graduate Studies Convocation Medal in the Faculty of Science is Dr. Grant Zazula. Uh, Dr. Zazula regrets he is unable to be present. He was recently appointed as the paleontologist for the Yukon Territory and is currently engaged in field work. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor of presenting the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in the Faculty of Science. The candidates will be hooded by Dr. Michael Plischke, Dean of the Faculty of Science. Dr. Heather Alexander, Biological Sciences, Senior Supervisor, Dr. Felix Breeden. Dr. Laura Chavez Lomeli, Department of Mathematics, Senior Supervisor, Dr. Luis Godin. Dr. Diane Dickey, Department of Chemistry, Senior Supervisor, Dr. Jason Clyburn. <laughs> Lee Fung, Department of Chemistry, Senior Supervisor, Dr. George Li Yi. Dr. Johan Foster, Department of Chemistry, Senior Supervisor, Dr. Vance Williams. Dr. Suzanne Gray, Department of Biology, Senior Supervisor, Dr. Larry Dill. Dr. Babak Hosseini Serage, Department of Physics, Senior Supervisor, Dr. Igor Herbert.
Dr. Nag Shawan Kumar, Department of Chemistry, Senior Supervisor, Dr. Mario Pinto. Dr. Mo Majub, Department of Molecular Biology and Biochemistry, Senior Supervisor, Dr. Lynn Quamby. <laughs> Dr. Philippus Patti, Department of Physics, Senior Supervisor, Dr. Barbara Friskin. Dr. Anna Rosa Siu, Department of Chemistry, Senior Supervisor, Dr. Stephen Holdcroft. Dr. Peter Sterling, Department of Molecular Biology and Biochemistry, Senior Supervisor, Dr. Michelle LaRue. Dr. Hani Zaha, Department of Molecular Biology and Biochemistry, Senior Supervisor, Dr. Peter Unrau. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor of presenting the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in the Faculty of Health Sciences. These are the first students to graduate from SFU's newest faculty. The first candidate for the degree of Master of Science in the Faculty of Health Sciences is the recipient of the Dean of Graduate Studies Convocation Medal in that faculty, and I ask Mr. Sasha Ullman to join me. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ullman has been an active member of the Faculty of Health Sciences, serving on committees that are shaping the academic direction of SFU's newest faculty. He maintained a very high grade point average in his master's program and completed a project that examined the safety of drinking water from private wells in the Fraser Valley. Amongst the many accomplishments of his varied career, he has taught science in Nunavut, contributed magazine articles on travel and skiing, and worked with organizations promoting sustainable agriculture. Mr. Ullman, it is an honor to present to you the Dean of Graduate Studies Convocation Medal in the Faculty of Health Sciences. Congratulations. Mr. Chancellor, I now continue with the presentation of the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in the Faculty of Health Sciences. Erica Branson. Stephen Gaspar. Susan Halley. Zara Hussein. Kyron Giovanni. Deepika Kurapu. Marie-Claude Lavoie. 
Alex Price. Rachelle Redman. Katayun Riazi. Andrew Tu. Natasha Van Borek. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor of presenting the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in the Faculty of Science. Wilson Au. John Bentley. Jenny Sprainy. Julia Chandler, Martin Clough, Kush Dalal, Nigel David, Denea Duke, Jeanne Gao, Fazad Haftbaradaran, Josephine Herman. Lin Ju. Hyun Wu Lee, Amy Liang, Xin Liu, Chuan Yung Lo. Alana McKenzie, Palavinaj Mutukumarana, Kaylee On, Mark Walters. Tony Yi, and our last candidate, Shauna Buchanan, uh, graduating in the Special Arrangements Interdisciplinary Program. Mr. Chancellor, the Dean of the Faculty of Science, Dr. Michael Plischke, will announce the names of the candidates for undergraduate degrees in his faculty. Mr. Chancellor, the recipient of the Dean's Convocation Medal for Undergraduate Studies in the Faculty of Science is Mr. Jan Verspoor. Mr. Verspoor regrets he is unable to attend. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor of presenting the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in the Faculty of Science. Faiza Ali. Salman Ali. Isaac Andreller. Jennifer Arnold. 
Jessica Atta, Deborah Austin, Anupreet Kaur Ball, Danielle Balik, Jasdeep Basra, Puya Bastani, Jennifer Baxter, Adamantia Beciaris, <laughs> Jackdeep Bati, Naveen Bhopal, Lisa Bonvino, Christopher Borsma, Matthew Bovenkamp, Boyan Bulovic, Ryan Campbell, Ashley Carlbeck, Jeff Catterall, Christina Cocker, Trevor Champagne, Alicia Chan, Goldwyn Chan, Kayim Chen, Timmy Chan, Wai Chan, Mitra Chandler, Huajin Chang, Eric Chapman, Debbie Chi, Angela Chekaluk, Tina Chen, Derek Chu, Leslie Chen, Victor Chun Chu Chen, Chi Yi Ethan Cheng, Alice Chung, Heidi Chung, Eric Chu, Jenny Chu, Tai Choi, Zinti Chu, Goldie Chow, Michael Christians, Lian Chu, Matthew Conroy, Haya Corto, Kelly Crew, David Cross, Kurt DeWolf, Rajnita Dalival, Ravijat Dillon, Jack Deep, <coughs> Christopher Doughty, Elisa Drake, Carolyn Duckham, Christy Aiken, Diana Erseg, Alejandro Erickson, Chris Fawcett, Tanya Fletcher, Matthew Fultz, Paula Friedi, Dennis Fung, Nikki Fung, Catherine Gagno, Kathleen Gan, Andrew Geisheimer, Manpreet Gill, 
Stephen Jin. Michael Goldberg. Irina Gomanova. Catherine Grosier. Christina Gulbranson. Graham Halson. Adrian Haddingen. Deborah Harasimov. Ian Harden. Crystal Harkness. Jan He. Mark Hurd. Sam Ho. Wayne Ho. Wing Ho. Tara Hopper. Xu Fang Ho. Lisa Howard. Shasha Hu. Aaron Hudson. Nafjid Hundal. Chan Chang Hung. Jimmy Huen. Sabrina Jagpal. Julian Ju Yon Jang. Dima Jassi. Aline Kanjan. Guraj Kunkun. Larissa Kiesman. Insu Kim. Vadim Kisilev. Nathan Clement. Anita Kolar. Edward Quo. Andrew Lacroix. Victoria Lawn. Pamela Labrum. Roger Lai. Jackie Lamb. Janie Lamb. Kelvin Lamb. Olive Lamb. Hoyan Yvonne Lau. Spencer Lawton. Daniela Lee. Eric Lee. Frank Lee. Dylan Lee. Michael Kyung Lee. Gabrielle Legendre. Benjamin Leung. Malina Leung. Piri Leung. Stephen Leung. John Lin. Kirsten Lindquist. Alex Liu. Siwan Liu. Heather Lord. Mengan Liu. Jason Liu. Amy Ann Lubick. Pierre Luck. Stephanie Lukowski. Pamela Lucier. Manoli Lizen. 
Suleyma, Sarah McDonald, Christine Magyar, Elham Majidi, Martin Mack, Shivani Mali, Brian May, Colin McInnes, Nina Mendoza, William Mills, He Moon, Cecily Morgan Yonker, Kirandeep Nahal, Koyuki Nakamori, Corey Nelson, Dixon Ng, Joanne Ng, Danny Ng, Steve Nijar, Ifan O, Lily O, Joshua Christopher Pablo, Carlo Panganiban, Trisha Parbu, George Patton, Christina Pedevia, <clears throat> Petr Polak, Richard Popov, Jaime Prevalzak, Oksana Prichina, Song Chen, Fatima Rajbaran, Isabel Raymond Bouchard, Dua A Rial, Lindsay Rose, Monty Sala, Oliver Sanchez, Sundeep Sangha, Mayu Sasaki, Jed Scarf, Rachel Schill, Diane Shannon, Kirsten Shaw, Seo Hyun Shin, Derek Sim, Kyle Skidmore, Rebecca Skukas, McKinley Small, Saishing Simon So, Nicholas Steele, Catherine Stephan, Laura Stusiak, Rui Sun, Thompson Tai, Toki William Tan, Ryan Tang, Kelsey Tu, Chung Yi Tong, Andrew Tsang, Gary Tse, Ricky Tsui, Nicholas Van Dolfsen, Hi. Natasha Van Niekerk, Julian Vanderpol, 
Monica Verma. Peter Wan. Bing Wang. Katrina Wang. Lei Wang. Michael Chipin Wang. <laughs> Rina Wang. Si Chao Wang. Colin Ward. Courtney Watt. <laughs> Laureen Wee. Michael Wong. Rachel Wong. Raymond Wong. Vivian Wong. Jody Wright. Shu Jing. Ling Su. Baharati Yang. Ching Ching Amy Yang. David Yang. Karen Hoi Ying Yao. Kayo Yoshida. Kevin Yu. Wing Yung. Scott Yuza. Helen Zai. Ching Ching Zhang. Ying Shi Zheng. Veronica Zich. Shuming Li. Mr. Chancellor, we now move to the presentation of one of the university's most prestigious medals, the Governor General's Gold Medal. Mr. Chancellor, the Governor General's Gold Medal is awarded the two top graduate students who are judged to have the most outstanding record in each graduating class. And the first recipient of this year's Governor General's Gold Medal for Graduate Studies is Dr. Patrick Nozel. Dr. Nozel regrets he's unable to be present currently doing field work in California. By the time Patrick Nozel completed his PhD in biological sciences, he had published 26 papers in some of the most prestigious scientific journals in the world. His doctoral work on the mechanisms of evolution has already earned him the American Society of Naturalists Young Investigator Award and a Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council postdoctoral fellowship. And he has been invited to present conferences at a host of international conferences. He's currently continuing his research on evolution at the University of British Columbia, research notable for its breadth and for its impact on studies of evolution and natural selection. We are very proud of Dr. Nozel's outstanding accomplishments and congratulate him. The other Governor General's gold medal will be presented to Dr. Jiang Ho at our ceremony on Friday morning. Mr. Chancellor, we now move to the presentation of another prestigious medal, the Governor General's Silver Medal. These silver medals are awarded to two undergraduate students judged to have the most outstanding record in each year's graduating class. And the first recipient of this year's Governor General Silver Medal for undergraduate studies is Derek Chu, who I ask to join me. Mr. Chu. In the words of one of his instructors, Derek Chu is possibly the most outstanding undergraduate student that the Department of Molecular Biology and Biochemistry has ever seen. He is graduating today with an honors degree 
and a near-perfect GPA of 4.28. What makes this record even more <laughs> what makes this record even more outstanding is his wide range of interests. On the way to his honors BSc, he managed also to obtain credits in the humanities, including three credits in Latin, to qualify for a certificate in the liberal arts. As well, he has taken time to carry out several research semesters and to participate in volunteer activities in the community. Simon Fraser University is proud to have Derek as one of its graduates, and we wish him continued success in his studies in medical school at the University of Toronto and a subsequent career as a practicing physician. Mr. Chu, in recognition of your truly outstanding achievements, it is an honor to present to you the Governor General's Silver Medal. Congratulations. The other Governor General's Silver Medal will be presented to Vincent Chu at Friday morning ceremony. Will the graduating class uh, please rise? I congratulate each of you on the completion of your degree, which is an impressive achievement, and I invite your friends and family to join me in congratulating the graduating class of 2007. Thank you, and now I invite you, the members of the graduating class, to reciprocate by thanking your friends and family, faculty and staff, all who have helped you achieve this goal. Thank you. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, this completes the formal awarding of degrees. Some candidates recommended by the Senate for degrees today are unable to be present and their names have therefore not been read out. I now admit them to the appropriate degrees as shown on the program. I have several thank yous to express before we end the day. To all of you for joining us on such a very cold day, it's hard to believe that summer is just around the corner. To the many volunteer staff, faculty members coordinated by the Student Service and Ceremonies and Events Office who have worked so hard to put a very smooth convocation day. And to the members of our four-time world champion Simon Fraser University Pipe Band for their special contribution to convocation. They will perform after the ceremony in the square directly behind the platform. This brings a close to the formal part of this morning's convocation and you are all invited to attend a reception to be held in the James Douglas room behind the platform on your right following the ceremony where I believe we'll have lots of hot, coal, hot coffee and tea. Please rise and remain standing at your places until the platform party has recessed. <laughs>